Welcome to the original rock and wrestling radio show. Welcome to Beyond Ringside, your source for wrestling, MMA, and boxing in the Southeast. To contact the Ringside Roundtable of Beyond Ringside, email them at beyondringside at gmail.com. And now, your host for Beyond Ringside, the man, no myth, all legend, Fast Eddie Lane. You got it, set and ready to ride. 25 before the top of the hour on this 14th day of September. Welcome to Beyond Ringside Live. Live from Studio One, Mike Macaroni. Always a pleasure. Thank you for the intro. By the way, we got to sit down with some new voice liners very soon. Trust me on that one. <laughs> Somebody we know pokes at me every once in a while about updating the PSAs, which that's my next project. Liners 1, PSAs 2. Sound bites, those are on the way. <laughs> Coming at multiple location station, tag team partners coming on board, welcoming Mark Mabo Bowman. Uh, could you stop talking so loud and so fast? I have a headache. Okay, you can have one or the other. Either I can kill the volume a little bit or kill the speed a little bit. Better yet, no, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> well, then I'm going to kill my phone line a little bit and go back to sleep. No, thou shalt not do that either. <laughs> well, then you need to calm your ass down. It's seg one. You know I'll chill by seg two. <laughs> like to welcome in tag team partner, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. What's up, Wick? We're going to try something a little bit different. I'm actually on my tablet, my headset, due to quote unquote suspicious activities from Skype and from my uh, Hotmail account. So kiss my ass and whatever else. Now, let me go ahead and say this. And this is partially, um, this is a partial m- me dropping a ball, and I apologize for that. Um, I spoke with Gavin, Sp- uh, Gavin Loudspeaker, loud and noxious. Um, a lot of people knew, of course, from Chikar and Wrestling Is. And we had originally spoken earlier this week about him coming on board, and I have not had a chance to get with him today to see if he's um, cleared to come on. I know we had some things happen last week, so I did get back in touch, and we did reschedule for today in about 25 minutes, but um, I haven't gotten back with him yet. I'm still dealing with freaking browser issues over here. F-R-I-C-K-I-N. Mm-hmm. I didn't do it in the first six minutes. That's somebody else. Speak, but things we are going to hit, and I'm going to try to send him a message, and Mabo, if you're near your computer, if you do the same, uh, one of us hopefully will be able to get with him. From that vantage point, something we've discussed over the last 24, and it's something that we've all had some fun with, and that is the factor of over on the WWE Network, if anybody says that number, I will shoot to kill. But I'm referring... 316-9900. There you go. <laughs> That's the number we can always use. NXT TakeOver 2. I'm sitting back saying, and Wick said it beautifully while we were off air. And Wick, I'll let you lead with your comment that you gave us. If they keep this up. Well, I'm just going to say this right off him. I was very, 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 very impressed with NXT. Those guys and girls... Because you put something out on Facebook that Angie that Angie actually said about the women's division in NXT, it far surpasses the women's division on WWE, and we all know that's considered the quote unquote minor league NXT. But holy crap, they go out and they hit spots that mean something. It's not Ring of Honor where you have fifteen brand busters followed by a small package. They're teaching psychology to these guys. But they're still letting them go out. The Ascension. My only problem with the Ascension is they should be dominant. They're too big. Whenever they caught uh, Sin Cara during the tag match, right? They they had a point. Now here, I had I have a, I have a little bit of problem with some of the things going on. You could tell who was calling the matches, and you could tell that there were there were hands put into the matches. The Ascension match against uh, what's the guy's name that's tagging with Sin Cara in NXT? Kalisto. Thank you, Kalisto. That guy is so much better than Sin Cara. And the Ascension catches him to the outside, and they just take him and just throw him behind him. No, man, if you're six foot four and six foot eight, you got to take that little mother and throw him. Don't just toss him over your head. That was the only problem I had with that. But the finish of that match was awesome. And Charlotte Flair, holy crap. That girl that she wrestled, what's her name, Bailey? Oh, I love Bailey. It's Bailey! <laughs> Charlotte Flair, she looks just like David Flair, just like David Flair. Her finishing move and the f- names they come up with this. You would have thought that I had named these people and named their moves. 
Natural Selection, fantastic. Fantastic name. They are giving those guys the rope. And then to rename Kenta, I had a problem with that, but I understand Kenta, you know, is a is a household name, and, and, and William Regal brought him in. But uh, you have Kenta run off both members of the Ascension, and then they lose the uh, tag team titles that night. Uh, there were a few, th- you know, nitpicky things, of course, you know, that's how it is. But I watched it. It was awesome. The wrestlers were awesome. The girls took it seriously. And... Huh. Generico, what what does he go by now? Sammy Zane. Oh, Sammy Zane. Him, him and Adrian Neville. Holy crap. Those two guys are awesome. Now, Bright futures for both of them. I don't care how short and tall they are. Triple H has allowed these guys to go out. And everybody knows it's not John Laronitis. This is what Jim Ross wanted to happen. Yep. In NXT. This is what they tried to do with OVW. You know, Lesnar came out of OVW, Orton, Rob Conway with his stank ass breath. Uh, <laughs> several people I mean the Bashams the Bashams at one time could have had a, had a chance to be something had they not you know had one of them shave their head and uh, act stupid but those guys in NXT are busting their asses uh, it was a great show it was a phenomenal event and I'm glad that they were able to go out and shine and I'm glad that WWE let them come out Monday night and actually uh, do a bit so yeah, that's something I'm going to cover in just a minute about the Monday night thing. Mabo, come on board. Your thoughts take over, too. Oh, you know me, dude. Like, hold on. I got to sneeze. <laughs> and it's going to take a while to sneeze because that's how my sneezes are. They know I have something to say, and then they're going to be a jerk. And it's going to wait till right up in the middle of the point of something, and then I'm going to sneeze. So, uh, behind, uh, I mean, seriously behind Chikara, uh, NXT is my, like, my favorite company out there. I mean, I look, I look at it as, uh, I look at it as, you know, a separate entity, even though it is WWE, I still look at it as a separate entity because they do things different than what you see on Monday night, Friday night. But I always look forward to, uh, every Thursday night when NXT comes on, even, even if it is, you know, taped. And even even when I do look at the results, I'll still watch it, unlike, you know, other programs. Because I, I like what's going on down there. Like, you know, just, there's just tons of stuff and tons of people. And I don't know, it's in the crowd. Like, it's not your, your typical WWE crowd, but it's also not, like, your typical independent wrestling crowd either. It's almost like a hybrid of both. It's like... I don't know. It's just—it's hard to say. But yeah, I just—I just love watching NXT. Um, and I agree with Wicked as far as like you know the Ascension. Uh, they're supposed to, to to me. They were supposed to be the WWE was or, you know they were trying to push them as almost like the next Road Warriors with just blowing through everybody. Um, but it seems like they've started tweaking them and changing them just a little bit. I guess maybe for TV, but. I don't know, but I've, I've always liked this tension. Uh, Bailey, uh, I love Bailey. I don't, I don't care what people say. She, to me, she is awesome, and she play like she just she, everything. Everything down there is cool. I just, I just love what goes on in NXT. Uh, they finally the NXT debut of Baron Corbin. Uh, that's, I think that's going to be the next person they try to get behind and. Uh, Again, try to try to clean up and get ready for the main stage. But yeah, I love NXT. Who was the big Mabo? Who was the big Samoan uh, looking guy that wrestled the former football player? Big Samoan. Oh, the big Samoan guy? looking guy. Yeah. Bull, uh, Bull Dempsey. Oh yes. Whoever is his agent. This is Enoch Tessarian talking to his agent, maybe Dean Malenko, whoever. <laughs> Stop letting that fat mother jump off the top rope. He is too big for that to be his finishing move. That diving headbutt is jacked up. That man had some good good moves. And to win with that, that was terrible. That was terrible. And then to get speared by the former football player, and the former football player like, crap. I don't even know who he is. I don't care. His tackle was terrible. But I did like the fact that I saw a lot of one counts. A lot of one counts. I like that. 
Yeah, that was uh, the former football player was uh, Mojo Raleigh, who they were kind of high on. I, you know, his whole thing is I don't get hype, I stay hype. I, I've never really cared for the dude. Um, and honestly, you can you can tell when they started this whole thing between Mojo and Bull uh, that the crowd was just. I guess they're they're getting sick of of Mojo Raleigh. They're kind of like. Uh, kind of like how Rocky Maivia was shoved down everybody's throats. Right. And they started turning on him. I can, they're slowly starting to turn on Mojo. So, and uh, I'm not saying I had anything, and this, you know, this is not me. You, you guys know I don't toot my own horn or anything, but I'm not saying this was me if I had anything to do with it, but when if you go back and watch past episodes, when Bull Dempsey first debuted, he started calling himself a, a, the last of a dying breed and a couple other things. And I posted something on Twitter about it to him, uh, uh, you know, using that tag. And I was like, well, I think Eddie Kingston might have something to say about that. Mm-hmm. And I don't ha- I, I don't think I have the email saved anymore, but, like, if, I, if anybody ever tweets at me, regardless if they had deleted or not, I still get an email. And... uh Bull Dempsey had a few things to say to me, and I guess maybe WWE made him erase them. Possibly. What did he but say? What did he, he say? You got to tell me. Uh, it was something like uh, he he referenced. First of all, he referenced Eddie Kingston. He said, "I'm not stealing, you know, anybody's gimmick or something like that." And I was just like, and I said, "So I said, look, man, last Eddie, Eddie Kingston has been walking around calling himself the last of a dying breed for years." And I was like, "He might have something to say to that. You might want to watch out." And he started talking, you know, he started specifically talking to me. And when I when I went to go, like I saw the emails first, and then when I went to check Twitter, you know, where people had, you know, where they talked to you, it had, they had been erased, so I still had the emails. And then it, uh, there was one that said, I, I respect Eddie Kingston, and he's my boy, what's up, King, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, just, just saying, you know, you might want to, whoever's, you know, whoever's, you know, working with you down there, they just might want to watch it. Well, he needs some help. He has all the tools to be to be good, not great. But uh, he needs to lose some weight. He needs to get in some type of shape besides looking like a pear. Uh, he well, needs to stop it. worrying about what fans say to him, and he needs to work on his cardio. His cardio is crap. I noticed that quickly. I mean, one thing is to squirt yourself down with water, you know, like Ron Bishop and a lot of guys do before matches. But uh, he's just... Not he's not his cardio isn't up to balance to what the WWE needs, especially for a man like that. I mean, if you're going to be a big man, and for God's sakes, as I said earlier, don't do the diving headbutt as your finish. He should have grabbed that that mojo guy up, and he should have he should have hit him with the greens from Asbury Park or something. It is terrible when you see big men go to the top rope. A big man that size, I don't care if you. He's in and out for a second. That's the only downside to using the tablet every once in a while. He get just out of range of it, and it'll, it'll, yep, it dropped. Um, while we're waiting on him to come back in, and we'll try to get him back in, um, I want to go ahead and bring this one out. And this is something because I've been a fan of the Ascension for a while. I've appreciated the work that they've done down at NXT. And ah, there he is. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, try, sorry, I'm, there you are. Like I said on my tablet. But anyway, that guy needs cardio. Now, let me bring something back up, because I was starting to say a second ago before you came back in, I have appreciated the work that the Ascension has done down in NXT, but, and I always know, this is something that we all realize, that there is such a thing as doing the honors, period. Um, could this be a definite sign, considering the fact that they lost the titles to the Lucha Dragons, and then got punked out by Kenta, technically, Doing the honors, putting him over, but you've got two of the biggest, two of the bigger monsters on the NXT roster, putting over a much smaller person before he brought the chair into the ring. Could this be the sign that a lot of people have been looking for about the Ascension being called up to the main roster, Mabo? Oh, I mean, well, they had their believe it or not on main event. They actually debuted. Right. I know main event's pretty much a. Uh, what do you call that thing? The network exclusive. Right. right. But um, 
forget. Uh, you know, they still they made they made their debut, and they've been doing house shows for you know at least the, the better part of a year now. Um, well, I go well, before when it was O'Brien and uh, Kenneth Cameron, and then of course he got fired and ended up down in TNA. Uh, but yeah, I mean Rick Victor and you know Connor O'Brien, they've been for the better part of a year been doing you know house shows, right? And uh, sorry, that sneeze made me lose my train of thought. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I didn't and. and like I said, for some reason, my feed, uh, I missed the entire tag match. I caught, like, when they, everybody came out, uh, started the match, and then it cut out. It didn't come back on until uh, the end. I had to hop online to see the the, the results of the of the tag match, and I saw that they lost, and I was just kind of, well, like, okay, well, that's, you know, it's like you said, that's a sign that they're getting called up, or more than likely getting called up. Right. But when they came out and confronted... Kenta or what, what's his name now? Ideo, Itami. Ideo H- Hideo Itami. Hideo Itami. Something like that. Uh, you know, I was like, oh, wow, they just threw him off, you know. <laughs> I was like, okay, obviously they're pissed off. I figured maybe it would lead to like a tag match, you know, at the next set of tapings, you know. But for him to come out, for him to come out, come back in the ring first, take down both Ascension before getting a chair, I didn't like that. Because these guys are supposed to be beasts. These supposed to these guys are supposed to be unstoppable. Correct. For better for the better part of a year, they were supposed to be. You know, they were the the, the NXT Tag Champions. So it, to me, it kind of made the Ascension look weak. But I don't know. I still like the Ascension. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do when they get called up. Hopefully, it'll be cool. Wick, let me get your thoughts on it. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yes, uh, Kenta. As, as we spoke right now, as you guys are saying, uh, going and getting the chair. First of all, I'm going to tell you right now, those two big guys, no matter what respect you have for Hideo Punk, that's what I'm going to call him, Hideo Punk. <laughs> See, he, he deserves to be able to steal some Punk. Uh, he, should, I mean, you have to tell these guys, but like, don't bump them until you go get the chair. Then you can bump them, you know, whatever, because, you know, then it's a guy with a chair. Let me tell you something. If I'm managing two guys and they get run off by one guy, I'm sending their ass back in the ring. That not it didn't it didn't maybe look them make them look weak. They did look weak. They're, how tall are those guys? They're over six foot. Both of them. Kent is like five seven. Right. You're out of your mind if you think that I'm and William Regal. Oh my goodness, William Regal's had to stand there. I'm sure Regal's like this makes no sense. This makes no sense. This makes no sense. You cannot have. Two big guys like that, and your NXT tag team champions at the time, run from one guy. I don't care the respect of for Kenta or Hideo Punk, whatever. You, I don't care. Respect's got nothing to do with it. It's about psychology and business. You've got the numbers game on the guy. William Regal's not going to help his ass out. But there's little things like that. That's what NXT needs, little things for these guys to be up because I think that it was a test on the Ascension. I think somebody was testing them to see what they did when Hideo grabbed the chair. I think that they wanted to see if they would let them scatter. You don't powder on a two-on-one. Nope. I'm sorry. You don't powder on a two-on-one. I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of guys, whenever a baby face gets in the ring for a tag team, they'll get out. Do you think that Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, who's a lot bigger than Kenta, and Joshua Hagen, who's about the size of Kenta, do you think that when they get in the ring, that the Unlucky Charms powder, and they're, if Chris and uh, Clyde are nowhere near the size of the Ascension, hell no. Because if they powdered, I told them I'd kick them in the nuts. <laughs> We're stronger than them. I'm bigger than both of them. I, I am bigger than Kenta, and I would not powder for him. He's going to have to take my ass out. But that's psychology. That's where you should have a good agent. I talk about the Bailey and Charlotte match. Good match. But why? Because Charlotte Flair has had psychology driven through her head the entire life that she has led. And it shows. Her psychology, the only psychology I know, and you can say whatever you want to about A.J. Lee. A.J. Lee is terrible. She can take a bump. That's it. Natalia is the only one on the WWE roster that shows the, the type of psychology that I saw with Charlotte Flair. I know who, oh, AJ, well, AJ, AJ is given those. If something happens, if something messes up, you can tell. 
who the veterans are when something goes wrong. Natalia is quick to be able to cover up anything somebody does. Agreed. And that's what, and that's what Charlotte was doing. When uh, Bailey, Bailey messed up on a kick, barely she knows sold it. Little things. It's little things. Yeah. And the little things in life mean a hell of a lot. Um, real quick, going six minutes before the top of the hour. For those of you joining us on TuneIn Radio, the TuneIn Radio app, thank you for joining us on BeyondRingside.com as well as Ustream, Shoutcast, and WinApp. Thank you for hanging with us today. Um, and Stitcher. And Stitcher is actually primarily for the Beyondcast. That's okay. Hey, Stitcher. Mm-hmm. We're moving up. Moving on up. You got it, buddy. You know, and... One of the things, now, I didn't catch, uh, my signal went down during the um, Baron Corbin situation. I didn't get a chance to see that one, and I still haven't gone back and watched it, because actually I've been so enamored. Um, The Enzo Amore, um, the, boy, I was going to hit that one a little bit later, but actually the one that I do want to take on before we hit to the top of the hour, the Fatal 4-Way for the NXT Championship, that match, basically, I saw very few major Okay, there were no major things wrong in that match. There were a couple of little things. Guess what? Big surprise. No big deal. It's a human. It's you're dealing with the human condition. But I'm going to sit back and say this: Adrian Neville, Tyler Breeze, Tyson Kidd, and Sami Zayn turned out one hell of a match that, in my book, was pay per view main event quality. Anybody want to take issue with that? I do. Go for it. It was main event quality. I think that was something that you could have stuck in as a, uh, instead of everybody go to the bathroom, a bathroom break, you could have put it in. It was strong. It was solid. But there were times in there you could not tell who was the baby face and who was the heel, with the exception of Sami Zayn. I would have actually said with the exception of Tyler Breeze. No, no. no see, yeah, I, I, that guy's actually pretty good. I like him. But uh, uh, Sami Zayn's the only one that played baby face. The rest of the guys were kind of mixed in, you know. Blurring you know, the you know line. And why, when, did, when is it the WWE has started letting people use closed fists? They've been doing that for a while. I, I guess I've missed this. I saw so many closed fists the last week. I was like, why the hell are you punching somebody? That's illegal. Mm-hmm. You do that at GCW. Or you do that at a Peach State Wrestling, they're gonna they're gonna you're, you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Plain and simple. And you cannot have somebody punch you in the face ten times and not have a black guy. Correct. That is, that is absolutely ignorant and retarded. And yes, I said retard, and I don't mean like the mentally disabled people. I'm talking about <laughs> like uh, I don't know, like a Chase Stevens match. Okay, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Mabo, come on in. Your thoughts, main event. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was drinking a glass of water when he said that. <laughs> um, Spit take. <laughs> damn it, what you almost made me choke. <laughs> well, hey, um, Chase, Chase Stevens would like that. He'd probably let you spit in his mouth for the right amount of money. Okay. Oh, hey, well, he is pretty. Um, I, like I said, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's. Uh, I agree with Wick. I wouldn't say main event. Like, like definitely, I, I wouldn't have seen that. Um, I don't think I could have seen that. Like. Made of, it definitely made of any, any kind of major pay per view, like as far as WWE goes. What it reminded me of though was, uh, you know when TNA would always put their X division match on first, yeah, just to get the crowd hype and going. That was it was to me. It reminded me of that. Okay. Just you know everywhere, just you know, just you couldn't even keep up with the action at some points. Um. Uh. I thought it was great, though. I, I, I liked it a lot. Um, Tyson Kidd, I think, you know, he's, he's, let's be honest, he's never, and this is no shot at him, but he's never going to be anything on the main roster again unless they come. I mean, they even tried to stick him with Justin Gabriel as a tag team, and he ended up getting hurt. Or I think Justin got hurt, and then Tyson turned around and got hurt. I mean, I think he found his spot kind of working with the younger talent down in NXT. Well, I mean, technically Tyson's still, you know, he's still at a young age himself. Yeah. But I don't think he's ever going to be any, he's not going to be a major player back at the main roster again. But I think he does solid down there with the new talent. Well, Um, 
Go uh, ahead. Tyler Breeze, uh, I think Tyler Breeze is great. I wish they haven't. I wish they didn't steal his. You know, don't hit me in the face. You know, shtick and give Miz. him the Miz. Oh, that pissed me off. That, that pissed me off. Um, Sami Zayn. Uh, I didn't think that he would make it uh, without being El Generico, and I have been proven wrong. I'll admit it. I'll be the first one to admit it. Uh, I love his little, you know, punk ska entrance and his, the little dance he does. But uh, the, the one thing that I hope they don't do, and it's almost like the NXT title is cursed. Whenever somebody gets it, they they turn heel. Look at Seth Rollins. Look, because he was the first one, followed by Big E, followed by Bo Dallas. And it looks like they're trying to turn. If, I, I, hopefully they will not turn Adrian Neville heel. They'll make it, you know, maybe like a friendly rivalry kind of ring of honor, you know, respect match or whatever. But right. that's what it starts to look like they're doing. And if they do that, that's just going to piss me off because now it may, now it just makes it seem like, the, you know, if if you're if you're a face and you get the NXT title, you're going to turn heel. Didn't we have the same problem with Impact Wrestling doing that for, for about, what, two years? Yeah, I yep. think we did. Bobby Roode gets... And that's the thing. Is like, and every time somebody would try to, like, help somebody out, they'd be like, oh, I'm turning on you. Like, you can't have a babyface champion? I know I know that the thing is, you know, to have a heel champion and have the babyface chase, but let's be honest. How many great heels do you know right now besides Bobby Roode, James Storm? Because Bray Wyatt's a babyface. I hate to tell you all that. How many yeah, great heels yeah. do you know right now on the national stage? Honestly, I know we're about to go to a break, but Eddie, name me one heel besides Bobby Roode and James Storm, and don't say Bully Ray. And actually, you're going to have to hold that thought because I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to take the issue with the factor of Bobby Roode because he's over as a face character right now. But I'll give you that answer: solid as a stone, so to speak. Maybe as solid as Stu Stone. Hmm. There's your championship wrestling from Hollywood reference for uh, segment one, and we'll be back on Beyond Ringside Live right after this. This is Harley Race, eight times NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, first ever King of the Ring, and you're locked into Beyond Ringside. The To Be Determined Show live Wednesday nights, 9 Central Standard Time. Join myself, the Orc of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and the Magic City Man, Fast Eddie Lane, as we take you to the edge of uncensored. Yes, we go uncensored, so make sure you have your earmuffs. Ask your parents, for those of you you know that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, please listen, because they may take effect right here, live, every Wednesday night, 9 Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. This is Mr. Wrestling 2. You're locked in to Beyond Ringside. This is Bob Allen, co-author of Gordon Soley, Something Left Behind, and the Soley Chronicles, and you're locked into Beyond Ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Smark Rage from Wrestle Rage Radio, coming to you from the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Join myself and my co-host, Super Stan Grubb, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, as we present Wrestle Rage Radio, where we rant and rave on everything in the world of pro wrestling. Sometimes we'll have a guest. Sometimes it'll be just me and Stan BSing about the sport that we love, pro wrestling. Check us out. Tune in Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, only on the Beyond Ringside Network. This is Todd Howard from Ellen Promotions, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. The music plays, the microphones go hot, and we are live seven minutes after the top of the hour on this beautiful Sunday. Hope it's great where you are. 
14th day of September. Thank you for hanging with us on Beyond Ringside Live. Want to remind everybody, of course, you can catch all the live programming here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network all the way through. Check us out through beyondringside.com. Check us out through Ustream. Check us out through TuneIn Radio, the TuneIn Radio app, as well as Shoutcast and Winamp. Going to give the full lowdown on Shoutcast and Winamp in just a couple of seconds. Fast Eddie Lane, live from Studio One, welcoming back in Mark Mabo Bowman. What's up, dude? Oh, still trying not to sneeze it's like kid you not that's the longest this is the longest a sneeze has ever been stuck in my nasal cavity and i know during during this specific interview coming up it's just gonna ruin everything (laughs) welcoming back in the wicked nemesis what's up dude big shout out to my man caprice coleman old friend of mine uh the voice of god the metatron not the megatron the megatron that would be murder one there you go but caprice caprice nobody nobody cuts a promo like Caprice Coleman, except for maybe our guest tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, he is a great friend to us here at the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Always a pleasure to have him on board. A lot of you know him as the voice of Chikara, as well as a number of different projects around the Northeast and across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, Gavin Loudspeaker returns to Beyond Ringside. Gavin, how you doing tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beyond Ringside. Gavin Loudspeaker coming to you live Sunday night. Here we are. We're going to talk about wrestling. We're going to talk about science. We're going to talk about monsters. We're going to talk about excitement. We're going to talk about king of trios. How is everybody out there? Dude, first off, long time no see. I hope everything's been going well, and I know you've been keeping busy. What all have you had on the plate? Well, I mean, uh, honestly, right now I'm watching some Georgia Championship wrestling. Uh, I've I've really, really been going uh, going back to the oldies, watching some old stuff in the early 80s. And uh, I'm watching some great Georgia championship wrestling. Before that, I was watching some Memphis championship wrestling. So I've really been immersing myself into the history of our great sport. Yeah, with Georgia Championship Wrestling, i got to lay it out there because, um, for me, that was one of the first real promotions that I saw. Of course, NWA out of um, Chattanooga, Tennessee, with the Goulas promotion here in Alabama, and then the advent of me getting cable and being able to see Georgia Championship Wrestling. Gordon Soley, Freddie Miller, I mean, uh, with Mr. Wrestling 2, the Mass Superstar, Super Destroyer, Junkyard Dog, Ted DiBiase, Tommy Rich, and you had some great talent go through those doors and in, that, in and out of that ring during that era. Yeah, right now they're they're showing a vignette of like a ninja. I don't know. Maybe it was the great Muda. Kabuki? I'm not sure who it is. Kabuki. But they're just showing a vignette. Some chucks and he's flipping them around. He's and he's meditating in a in a Japanese garden. Kabuki. I'm thinking Kabuki. It has to be. It has to be. Gary Hart has to be that. And yeah, because this is 1983, so it is Kabuki. Yeah, that would be Kabuki managed by Gary Hart, and they were in the middle of a feud with the American Dream Dusty Rhodes at that point, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and, uh, and now this, uh, and now we've got the Briscoe brothers uh, talking on screen, and uh, Jack Briscoe's got the belt, and Jerry's got the microphone. Jack and Jerry Briscoe, pure timeless and pure class all the way across the board. I mean, to me, Jack was one of the um, one of the best wrestlers to come down the pike during the seventies and the mid eighties, and the man represented the NWA Championship beautifully. But let me go ahead and lay this one out there: if there was one era. Or one promotion. I know you've been catching up on Memphis as well as Georgia. If you right. had, to, if you had to do a coin toss, which one would you rather do the announcing for right now? Oh, because you no, know, I would choose like 1983 to 1985 World Class. Nice. Last year, that that's what I would have wanted to be a part of. And of course, that would be. I don't know if that counts as an era, but. No, it actually does. And uh, Wicked was asking about um, the direct reference to the Von Erichs on that one. Yeah, Von Erichs. I mean, everything that they did with the, the, the using music and the Free Bird, Gary Hart, and um, all the tag teams, the, the Chris Adams and Gina Hernandez yeah. and, and Bruiser Brody, on and on and on. Mm. Hercules Hernandez, I think, was still out there during yeah. that era. I'm trying to remember because there was so much great Hercules talent. Hercules Diplomas. Say again. I'm sorry. Iceman King Parsons. Oh, yes. Big one. And actually, um, Iceman King Parsons uh, was floating between world class and mid south wrestling at that point with Bill Watts promotion. Yeah, he just looked like a just a really legitimate tough person. 
<laughs> Iceman. Uh, Ice- that he had a ta- he had a chest tattoo back when not everybody even had a tattoo. <laughs> Very true. Can, uh, do, do you guys remember whenever uh, Iceman was a free bird for a night? Missed that. I remember that. It was really. It was pretty brief. Yeah, it was one night. But still, he went out there and he rocked with the Freebirds. Yeah, see, I grew up in Dallas in 86 and 87, so I caught the tail end of world class. But I have to ask a question to Gavin really quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. I ask you, Gavin, uh, who, who, what have you learned? Who have you, and you've been watching all this old stuff, and that's really what you go back to watch the old stuff from, is to hone your craft to see what you can do. Is there someone or is there something that you've seen you're like, that makes me better? That well, person, I, I, that person. Um, that's, a, that's funny. Um, I, I just, I, I love, you know, I love what I watched growing up, which is, you know, uh, early 80s WWF and listening to that, Vince, that Vince McMahon do that commentary. Yeah. That's just, I don't know if I love it because I, I think it's great or if I love it just because it reminds me of being a kid or, or what, but that's, that's, a, that's what I've always tried to emulate. You can actually have the best of both worlds in that particular regard. And while we're going around the table, let's do it. Mark Mabo Bowman, come on in. Hi. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> I figured at this point you would have a question to, um, to jump in with Gavin. Oh, I didn't know. I was just letting you guys have fun and, you know, talk talk shop and everything. And just waiting Mabo's just waiting. Mabo's waiting for the karaoke to start. Oh, karaoke, and I'm waiting for... We all know what I'm waiting to start talking about. Sandwiches. I love sandwiches. Why do I not have the Tony Stark drop ready to go right now? Because I didn't see that coming. Let me. Um, before you mentioned the word, you mentioned the K word. I'm going to ask you because we talked about it last time you were on. As of this current run right now, what has been the most oversung and abused? If you want to break them up, put them together, or keep them separate, that's fine. Song that um you've seen. <laughs> that- the uh, what's the what's the karaoke uh, the karaoke uh, killer these days? Um, I, you know, I guess I I don't like. Honestly, I guess since it's my job and I do it every night, um, I guess nothing, it doesn't really, nothing really bothers me anymore. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think that, um, you know, Don't Stop Believing is, is always a bad idea. And Bohemian Rhapsody, um, you know, is, can, can, be, can be left out. It's not necessary for the night to succeed. But uh, if somebody wants to bust out those songs, I don't want it, you know, because I do karaoke every single night, you know what I mean? They, don't, they maybe only do karaoke one night a year, but they want to sing those songs. Who am I to, to, to keep them from doing it? Yeah, for me, the ones that I've actually taken, one I took out of my system was Brad Paisley and Allison Krauss' Whiskey Lullaby, because every bar owner who's heard that song done, it's like, dude, tell them you don't have it, please. It's like, okay, no problem. <laughs> And the other one that just makes me want to drink every time I hear it, and I'm actually talking about drinking battery acid as opposed to Cuervo or um, Jägermeister, is a picture, Kid Rock, Sheryl Crow. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I, okay, you know what? All right, all right. And so now, now, that, now, that, now that you've got, got me going here, <laughs> I can't stand Lady Antebellum. Need you, yeah, the, the Lady Antebellum Need You Now is really overdone. And uh, the other one would be... Uh, Anything from Greece. Anyone? The musical Greece, not the country. Oh, okay. So, in other words... Okay. Now, you, now you've ruffled Eddie's feathers, because Eddie loves doing that Greece song. He even has another version of it. But I want to ask both of you guys something. Somebody walks up to, to, the, to, the, to the machine and tells you, I want to hear Glenn Fry, You Belong to the City. Your first off, Gavin. Mm. Did you say, uh, You Belong to the City? Yeah. Yes, sir. You want me to start singing it right now? <laughs> You've been long to the city. You've been long to the night. Never it's something about a river of darkness. Who is that? Who is that? We now have the sound bite for later on in the show. Um, no, that's I was... not Phil. Wait, that's not Phil Collins. Who is that? <laughs> it, it's Glenn Fry. Greg Greg Price. Glenn Fry. Glenn Fry, the eagle, right, right. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> no, actually, what Wick was asking was, and I don't, I guess you didn't hear him on that one. If someone comes up and wants to sing it, what's the first thing that goes through your head? Oh. <laughs> um. Wow. I guess that uh, this person must spend a lot, a lot of time 
browsing through Walmart. <laughs> you got it on that one. I'm not even going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Phrase it, Pegas. I got nothing. No, it's like it's like when some it's certain Eagles songs and certain songs that are done by former Eagles members that should not be done. It's like if somebody comes up and says, "I want to sing New York Minute" by Don Henley, I'm going, I'm gonna go just order me a sixteen piece uh, set of wings right now and just wait until you get done before I come back up. I take no credit, unless of course. But see, here's the thing: you can normally tell by the first song someone does. If they're if they've got the guns in order to pull off another song of uh, that's going to take it up a notch, and it's like if they've done you know Good Directions by Billy Currington as their first song, and then they want to sing something ultra poetic, I'm going earplugs, please. <laughs> well, it's also it's also all about timing. Because speaking of Don Henley, you know, someone sang Boys of Summer, you know, just the other week, right? And the timing was perfect. The summer's over. We're all sad. You know, that song is just, I think, you know, that song really does pull your heartstrings, even if you do sing it poorly. Very so, true. So I think that that can also make for a great performance as well. Speak. But, it's not like, but again, again, karaoke to me, in my opinion, you know, it, it's, it's not a competition, and I, I certainly don't allow any wagering. Unless they're going to bet a beer. <laughs> Bribery is something something else entirely that works that works all together yeah it's and now depending on where you do it it's like if you do it in a family restaurant of course you have to watch out for people who want to come up and sing something like hey pop that by the two live crew and you say nope can't do that here sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> perhaps you'd like to do some will smith uh i yeah I'll, I'll aggravate the hell out of him and say here try this one by justin bieber so people will boo you out of the building no <laughs> I'm not. I get rid of them. I'm not kidding. But speaking of being serious, and we're going to do this hard segue. Um, before we do, one of the topics that we've always enjoyed talking with you about, of course, is Kaiju Big Battle. Now, one of the most elusive situations for people who don't really take the time to keep track of Kaiju. First off, other than wanting to smack them on the head with a feather duster, what do you tell them? Uh, well, I just say, um, you know, perhaps you are uh, uninitiated. Kaiju Big Battle is, it's, 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 a, it's a live monster wrestling show. And it happens right, you know, in front of your face, inside a ring where, uh, ka you know, kaiju, which, which means, which means like a, gi a giant Japanese monster, like, let's say, Godzilla, for instance. But uh, we have all kinds of monsters, and they battle it out. Uh, Dr. Cube, who some people might be familiar with from Chikara, uh, he is an evil scientist and he creates monsters that destroy cities all over, the, all over this great nation of ours. And in retaliation, there is a crew of a kaiju heroes uh, like Kung Fu Chicken Noodle, an American Beetle, and the Plantain Twins. And they come together and they fight the evil monsters of Dr. Cube, uh, and they do it right in the middle of the ring, and they destroy entire city, entire city blocks, and uh, do, do tons and tons of property damage uh, to uh, valuable tenement buildings in such cities as New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, New Orleans, and uh, pretty soon we are coming for the very first time to the sunny state of Florida. Very cool. What part? Uh, we are going to be doing four, uh, four shows in the month of October, at the end of October, and they will be in the cities of uh, Wyber, which is near Tampa. Right. Uh, the other, uh, they will be uh, part of, uh, in Gainesville, Florida, uh, and uh, also Jacksonville. I think there's a, that's going to be part of a, a music deal called The Fest. I don't know if you've heard of it. And then uh, also Orlando. Very cool, very cool. So in other words, y'all get a good vacation. Not necessarily a working vacation on Kaiju. <laughs> get to spend it down it's in Florida. First, yeah, it's actually, this is the first. This is the first time we've done uh, a, a tour, so to say. Mabo, come on board. I know you've been jumping at the bit on this topic. About Kaiju? Yes. Oh, I love the Kaiju. I hadn't, hadn't seen anything lately, and it's shame on me, but I have no doubt that uh, that Dr. Cube has been up to his nefarious shenanigans 
Well, as it as it works out, we are going to be in Orlando on Halloween. I think that is going to be uh, a pretty outrageous night. Well, is there is there any truth to the rumor that since you guys will be, you know, near, near Orlando, or in Orlando, the Orlando proper, any truth to the rumor that Doctor Cube might actually try to take over the Magic Kingdom? There is, uh, I mean, not only truth. There is a theory that Doctor Cube is the mastermind behind the Utilidors that are that run underneath Disney World, and that uh, the Utilidors are secretly uh, uh, a, a tunnel to Doctor Doctor Cube laboratories that he has all throughout uh, the underground sections of Disney World, and uh, there's even a plan for uh, a Kaiju Land theme park. Really. Nice. Yeah, there's only one. The only we've only run into one obstacle to make that happen. And what would that be? Uh, we need about uh, seven hundred million dollars to oh. get to make that happen, and uh, we don't exactly have those funds yet. Yeah. But once we do, once we do, we'll have a lot of money to play with. I thought you were just uh, going to say the the lack of proper real estate that would be adequate and suitable. Well, you know, the real estate used to be so doggone cheap until yeah. Walt went down there and jacked up the prices. Yeah, anything that the property values just go ahead and they say it's like, let's go commercial, let's charge more, even if we don't have to. <laughs> he he bought that for like three cents an acre, and then as soon as they found out it was Walt Disney property, becomes three thousand an acre. At least, yeah, definitely. Mabo, you were about to say. Oh, I don't know. I was just—I could just imagine, you know, Doctor Q being the next great Disney villain, standing alongside Captain Hook and Maleficent. Yeah. Oh, he that would, would be he, cool. He could definitely, he could, he could definitely uh, possibly be enlisting the help of Disney Imagineer Raleigh Crump. Do you know who? Have you heard of that guy? Heard the Raleigh name? Crump? Heard. Uh, yeah, Raleigh Crump. He's a Disney. Uh, he's a famous Disney Imagineer, and he designed. Uh, he designed. The Haunted Mansion, and many other, like, super famous rides. Oh. Hmm. I know the name, but I don't know that much of the background, so I really can't, I really can't add on anything on that one. My apologies. Shoot me. <laughs> and, and, well, what, what, well, see, I'm a big Disney fanatic, and shame on me for actually not knowing the name Raleigh Crump. I mean, I know it, uh, it's a just he, I, I recently just came across it because he has been, um, Disney recently came out with a comic book called Seekers of the Weird, and it's Dude, based I read on a, that. Yeah, and the, the the it's based on a on a Disney ride that was never ever made, and it was called the Museum of the Weird, and it was yeah. designed by Raleigh Crump, and it was going to be a walkthrough that you that was like you walked through it before you went into the haunted mansion, like like kind of a like a like a queue like a line, and then you yeah. you look at all these of the weird stuff and he designed all this crazy stuff and then um, but Walt Disney ended up dying in 1966 so they ended up not making that and they just used some of the stuff in the Haunted Mansion but uh, for some reason this ride lives on in, in the minds of every single like Disney fanatic and they're always like why well, you know like, how come they, maybe they'll make it one day maybe, maybe they'll do it again um, maybe they'll make a movie about it. Like one time there was a talk about making a movie about it, the Museum of the Weird. But finally, I guess Disney made a comic book with Marvel, and they just put out a comic book about it. See, that's why uh, when you said the name, it, 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 well, see, when you said the name, that's why it sounded familiar, because I picked up the first issue. Uh, I haven't been able to find the uh, two, three, and four. And, and I, think, um, I, think it's just, I, I think they're only at one, right? Oh, no, no, no. Secrets of the Weird? Um... They're over and they actually have everything collected in a trade. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I've yeah. only been over. Hmm. And uh, they, they've actually moved on to a figment uh, based on the Epcot ride, the figment uh, comic book. Oh, so they're on, they're on the second ride now? Oh, well, I wouldn't say it's a ride. It's Do uh, you remember figment from Epcot? Oh, he's just he's in it. Yeah, it's, it's the comic book based on him. It's very steampunk-esque. Oh, and this is part of the like um the Disney thing. Is it called Kingdom? Yeah, I think it's going to be called the Kingdom series. So I got the, right. I got the latest issue right in front of me somewhere. Um, yeah, uh, Disney Museum Kingdoms. And do me a favor. Let me shift gears real quick. Wicked Nemesis, welcome back in. Sorry about that. I'm having problems with the tablet and the laptop. So 
What did I miss? Do we do we talk about any, anybody? We talk about this uh, uh, kaiju big battle and how uh, you know it's, it's man versus monsters and monsters are ruling the world. We, we really just this. we really just got started into that topic. That's why I'm glad oh. you called back in when you did. Oh yes, yay! <laughs> kaiju big battle. Everybody knows I love that. Kaiju big battle is um we're we're actually uh this is a mile this is a milestone year. It's our twentieth anniversary. Uh, Holy crap! Um, it's you know, it'll either make you feel, you know, re- really young or really old. Uh, I don't know. For me, it's it's definitely really old. But um, we're having fun with it, and we're having a, a big anniversary show in New York City on October 11th at Stage 48. Hey, it's that's my birthday. Big... Oh, really? Yeah. We're going to have a big party. We're going to have a big party. Uh, it's a big celebration, and, um, you know, we're rumored to be busting out the time machine and Uh-oh. getting some tr- some old kaiju stars, stars from the past, even ones who who may have de- have been deceased through the use of uh, of a time machine. What do you think of that? Very cool. I think Gwen Fra wrote a song about that. <laughs> well, would, that, would you be using the Flash's time treadmill, or <gasps> possibly Mister Fantastic's you know time machine? What was it? Well, anything specific? <laughs> I think the time treadmill would be perfect. I haven't thought of the Flash's time treadmill in forever and a day. Now, did that go when Barry went, or did Wally use that, too? I'm trying to remember. Oh, Wally had it. Okay. It's in the Flash Museum, or it was. Time treadmill sounds like something you could you could buy off a television ad. Like a 1-800. I think Ron... I think Ron the time treadmill. Travel through time and lose weight. <laughs> and because it's better than the black racer skis, so... Nobody gets that joke. That was funny, though. The, the nerds get that. The nerds get that one. Nerds! Okay, Ogre. <laughs> nerds! Wow. Now, you were making a reference to the upcoming New York Day. Oh, the... as, as, as a tear runs down my cheek, you guys get that. You guys can't see. <laughs> it's a great movie. Revenge of the Nerds is a fantastic movie, and I would love to go back and play ever. with Ogre. Uh, okay. What about Nerds 2, Nerds of Paradise? Me. Nerds they in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, <laughs> excellent song by 38 Special as well. Oh, man, I, I'm old now. Wow. It take me back to paradise. I haven't heard that song in so a while. You, you know the time is right. Yeah. 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 Make it real. Take me, take me, take me back, back to paradise. paradise. I have Uh-huh. Okay, this is bad. I haven't thought of that song in forever in a damn day. Ah. Oh, I cried a little bit. <laughs> do me a favor, do me a favor, guys. We're going to go to the bottom of the hour break. Folks, hang with us. We will be back with Gavin oh. Loudspeaker, a special guest. In, uh, give us about three minutes on this sea break, and we'll be back. This is Beyond Ringside Live. This is Randy Rose from the original Midnight Express, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. This is Cuball Carmichael. And you're locked into Beyond Ringside. Listen up, friends. Hey, everyone. This is The Cause, Robert Cosper, host of Cause and Effects Thursday Night Radio Throwdown. This is your invitation to join me, along with The Effects, Stuart Couch, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, and all of the craziness that is C&E, right here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. It's wrestling radio with a twist, and some might just say with a twist of lime when the bar is open. Cause and effect right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. This is Country Jack, Corey Hollis, and you are locked in to Beyond Ringside. Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Eddie Lane. And I'm the Cause, Robert Cosper. And this is your invitation to join us and the hitman, Big Daddy Cool, Ryan Adcock, right here for the Saturday Showcase. At Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10, 9, 8 a.m. Pacific Time. See? We do math around this place. Be sure to catch us right here on BeyondRingside.com. You can also listen through Winamp for Android and BlackBerry, as well as the Shoutcast mobile app for Apple as well. Remember, that Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, right here on the Beyond Ringside radio network. And let me tell you how you can find the hitman, Big Daddy Cool Ryan Adcock, on social media. It's very easy. It's at www.kissmyass. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Die. Stop that right there. Folks, we'll see you Saturday on the showcase. Bye for now. Hey, folks. This is WWE.
WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and we walked into that ringside. This time, hello! You know, I joke about this, but there's going to come a point in time where we actually release the audio, the off-air version of the show. <laughs> Damn it. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside Live, 24 before the top of the hour on this beautiful Sunday, the 14th day of September. Hoping everybody is having a great weekend. Live from Studio One, Fast Study Lane, live from Bohemian Grove, the Wicked Nemesis. If Jennifer Gray jumps my arms, I don't know if I hit her with a, with a European overcoat. I may hit her with a... Uh, with a 3D, though. 3D! Now I'm ah! Live from an area code that nobody can pronounce, Mark Mabo Bowman. Oh, we going to Claudio that ish. <laughs> 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 and ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest at this time, good friend of the family here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network, Gavin Loudspeaker. Gavin, welcome back. Well, you can probably expect Dr. Cube and his monsters to 3D Jennifer Grey through a building. We can work with this concept. I want video. Of course, that seems to be the topic we've talked about off air. We've all said something, and somebody else, somebody else will say, I want video. And there's some things that will never be videoed if I can help it. <laughs> hey, Dr. Cube is my pick for King of Trios, so you better watch out. <laughs> Actually, Dr. Cube is my pick for 2016 presidential nomination. At least you know. At least you know. And I'll leave it at that, because if you don't know, then you better know, because it's always good to know. Speaking of good to know, and there is a word that starts with the same letter as no. It's called king. And in this case, sometimes you might just want to try to dissect things into three parts, which would make it a trio. I'm going a long way for this one, kids, and it's almost paying off. Coming up, we are right around the corner from one of the biggest events of the year. From Chikara Pro Wrestling, King of Trios, KOT 14, the 19th, 20th, and 21st in Easton, Pennsylvania. Gavin, does it get any crazier than King of Trios? Absolutely not. I mean, King of Trios is definitely uh, the the, the grandest stage in Chikara. We're going to, we roll out the red carpet and uh, pull out all the stops. Every single year, uh, uh, King of Trios is the highlight. And of course, last year we were unable to have King of Trios, so it, this is even uh, it's an even bigger celebration because we're coming back after a, a year long break. Uh, the Chikara fans are rabid, and they are ready for the greatest trios tournament in the entire world. Before we really start hitting on KOT, Mabo, you and I have had discussions about um, the rebirth of Chikara. Now I know that you and I have both been very outspoken, you more so than myself on this one. Um, Come on in with Gavin on this one. I know that there's probably a question or two you want to ask him. I, Daddy, don't. Because you don't want to start crying. Because, you know, I told you I started crying at the end of uh, National Pro Wrestling Day this year. So, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to stick to King of Trios. I don't want to bring it up because I'm just happy that <laughs> the car is back. So, stop trying to make me cry, damn it. I'm not trying to make you cry, but I knew that. I had a feeling there might be a question or two that you wanted to ask. And let me go ahead and lay this one out there. Gavin, for you personally. On the rebirth of Chikara, when everything started coming back into play and you knew that the, that the stars were lining up and everything was going to be back in action, what was your initial reaction? My initial reaction was, oh my God, uh, Chikara coming back. And the very next thing I thought was, oh my God, that means we're going to have another King of Trios. Nice segue. Thank you. And- I, that, no, that is exactly what was my thought because I was like, King of Trios, we give... We give to the world, you know, um, something that, you know, this, this, this part of the country doesn't really get to see. Not only the style of wrestling that comes from the trios tournament, but also all this talent that's from the past, talent that is, you know, you're going to, that are coming up on their way up that people have heard about, and uh, mixing it up in all kinds of other matches. Uh, that take place during the weekend, you know, as, as you know, as teams get eliminated, uh, you know, that affects that affects how other matches line up that weekend. And of course, there's the there's the Rey de Voladores tournament, which is the King of High Flyers, right? And then, of course, you bring that together with Chikara fans from all over the globe who fly in from other countries just to see King of Trios. Now, well, so it really is. It really is my it. favorite. It's our WrestleMania, you know, if you want to put it that way. Well, that's what I was just going to actually say, uh, Gavin, because. Uh, Chikara's intrepid reporter Babs, you know, she has uh, Chikara in 15 minutes or less, 
And she always says on her podcast that to her, KOT is her WrestleMania. And I have to agree. I mean, as much as I love, you know, like I love the Cibernetico. I think, you know, I always look forward to seeing the two teams established for the Cibernetico. But, um, and of course, you know, Anniversario and, and all that. But to me, it's like I have to agree with her. King of Trios is my WrestleMania because you have so much going on that weekend. You have the, uh, once again, it's being brought back to Fan Conclave. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you guys are going to be doing the second the second potluck and whatever cookout. Oh yeah, cookout, right? The fan, which which is which is totally you know that's all the fans that they they're the ones who come and they bring all you know they bring all the food and the refreshments and and they make they make all that happen. Like that's like I, I don't think people realize how much the fans actually are part of everything that goes on that weekend and the fan conclave too. I mean, it's, it's all like games and, and interactive stuff and, um, you know, singing song. We had karaoke one year. <laughs> it was well, actually Chikario. Actually, Chikarioke is a There you it. go. <laughs> well, I've, I've heard that uh, there may be rumor of you be you, you, you might be doing uh, a medley of some of your best of. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be doing some new ones, too. Oh, awesome. But see, that's, that's, that's what I like. Um, and, and you know, like you said, you mentioned the you know the fans, the Chikarmi and the Chikarm forces, and they're they are what helped perpetuate and keep the dream of Chikara alive when it was shut down uh, through the scavenger hunts and you know the I am Chikara, we are Chikara, and I mean you know. Damn it, I'm crying again. Eddie, take over. Okay. <laughs> Now, now, for our friends in the northeastern United States, and I really just, I hate to segment it like that, but it's the truth, because a lot of people in the northeastern U.S., as well as the upper mid-Atlantic area, have an opportunity to catch a great three-night event. And I will agree, especially with the talent that Chikara has always made it a tradition to bring in, as well as the homegrown mega talent that they have. You've got some dynamic performers, some great athletes that perform under the banner of Jakara. And when you have the opportunity to have all of these stars, as well as additional stars coming on, coming in that you're going to know, you're going to recognize and you're going to be able to identify with because you're already fans of them as well. And there's a yeah. case, there's a, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, the Chikarmi also, you know, um, I love watching who they latch on to over the course of the weekend. Right. You know, because sometimes um, a team will come out, uh, come out of nowhere, a team that they're not familiar with, and they'll just win them over, you know, over the course of three nights. And by the third night, you know, you're really pulling for this team who two nights ago you didn't really know who they were. I really love watching that happen. We saw, I saw it happen many times. One instance I remember was like with the, the Soul Touches, who kind of came out of nowhere and became instant Chikara favorite. Right. We'll see. It's like for me, um, two of the reasons why I would love to be out up there for that. Of course, a uh, good friend of ours here on the on the network, Kizarni Sinbodi, and the Auditorium making their appearance um, on this weekend for uh, King of Trios. As well. yeah, members no, of no, Eddie, members of Eddie, Blood. No, Eddie. This show, I, I know this is your baby, but we are not going to have anything to do with the flood. We are not going to stand behind anything they do. Anybody who is represented by the flood who's been on the show, they are uh, uh, persona non grata, and we're not going to tolerate it. It's plain and simple. All right. All right. Well, then that, you're talking to, that, that would mean you're talking about uh, groups like the BDK. That means you're talking about uh, Sidney Bacabella's Wrecking Crew. That means you're talking about Dr. Cube. That means you're talking about Jimmy Jacobs and his vulture-like uh, army that he's got. And, uh, you know, you're talking about the Gekito as well. All, yeah, all, I mean, look, the, all of these groups together uh, come under the banner of the Flood. And, and like I said, I, I know, Eddie, you said that, you know, Sin Bodhi's been on. That's fine. But we're not going to back him. Not going to do it. Sin Bodhi is, 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 is uh, you know, he's, he's just as, as evil as he is weird, you know. He's, he's sort of like the, uh, the wrestling version of the post office. Good analogy. I like that one. <laughs> I will go. Hey, can I sing a song for you guys? Say it again. Can I sing a song for you guys? I have a song prepared just for you guys. I Bring it on. Like it. You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, Gavin Loudspeaker. <laughs> All right, here we go. Can you hear the guitar? Yes, I can. 
All right, here we go. Keep on spinning. Keep me back in my family life. Singing songs about Lucha Libre. Having fun, super party vibes. Keep it alive. Sweet home, my Jakara. Well, rope's all blue. Sweet home, my Jakara. We are coming home for good. Now some folks don't want to party. Some folks just shut us down like a flood. Give those jokers a reminder And run those jokers out of town and say it loud Sweet home, my Chikara Well, rope all blue Sweet home, my Chikara We're coming home for good Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Gavin Loudspeaker. <laughs> I love it. That was the abbreviated version. It goes on for another. It goes on for another seven minutes. So when do we get the full music video? Uh, at King Trios, you'll get it. You'll get. You'll get it live, and then the video will be coming shortly after that. Very nice, unexpected, greatly appreciated. Do me a favor, and I know that we're gonna we're gonna have to pay attention on certain way that the way that I say certain things because there have been some guests who we've had on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network that are gonna fall into that category to where Mabo's gonna sit back and say, "Eddie, watch it." But let me get let's go ahead and run this down. The opening round matches for KOT Team UK versus the Block Party. That's gonna be a very very interesting uh, matchup right there. The Block Party. Uh have been um, brutal in their assault, and they've been gaining a lot of steam. Um, watch out for Mr. Mr. Azerbaijan. He's incredibly sexy. He's won Mr. Azerbaijan's Sexiest Man multiple years in a row, uh, and he brings that cocky confidence to the ring, uh, as well as uh, his partners uh, in, in, in brutal, brutal combat against these youngsters from the U.K., and I was hoping Mabel would catch the message. I'll go ahead and bring it in. Um, the analogy, the acronym that I can never really put together properly because my brain always short circuits halfway through. Mabo? Night Eye for the Pirate Guy or, uh, versus Gekito. Thank you. There you go right there. I mean, now you're, 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 you're talking about Gekito where you're talking about the Shard, Jigsaw, and 17. Shard and Jigsaw are former tag team champions themselves. And 17 is always deadly uh, because he is a, uh, a master of 17 secret moves in wrestling that were forgotten that have been outlawed since. Another one of the first round pairings coming up for King of Trios. The Flood versus the Spectral Envoy. Well, there, now right there is, uh, I mean, that, that's your meat and potatoes. I mean, you're talking about the Flood, uh, you know, the, the cause of, uh, of, of all of our grief right now, uh, going against uh, one of the most popular trios of all time, uh, possibly the most popular single wrestler of all time, Ultraman just Black, his spectral, spectral envoy, uh, longtime uh, uh, partner and uh, ally, Halla Wicked, who's also a former Young Lions Cup champion, former Campeone de Parejas, and then Frightmare, of course, the protege, uh, who is uh, uh, just a, a ball of, a frenetic ball of kinetic energy, and he uh, is a former. Rookie of the his first year, he was a rookie of a pro wrestling uh, observer's rookie of the year. So we're talking about the Spectral Envoy being, um, if not the top tag team in Chicago, definitely one of them. 
Now, uh, well, to, to, uh, for uh, those listening to clarify, when Eddie says the flood, this was one of the many uh, factions of the flood. This one being, uh, I believe they're calling it uh, BD Cubed, which would be uh, Aris, Knockin, and Dr. Cube will be taking on the Spectral Envoy. Yeah, uh, Ari, the, uh, the longtime mastermind behind BDK, which, you know, at one time held, uh, you know, had members like Sarah Del Rey and Claudio Castagnoli, as well as Tim Donst, uh, and, uh, and you remember that, but uh, uh, at this point right now, he's uh, enlisted this character, Knockin, who is uh, a very, very uh, imposing figure, very almost almost big like Tursus uh, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. And uh, Ares, of course, a devious mastermind. Um, he was uh, involved in the scandal behind the Eye of Tear, if you guys remember that. Yeah. And then Dr. Cube, of course, always, always in the center of the supernatural controversies of the world. Well, you also know how you can tell Ares is a bad guy? That killer mustache he's sporting these days. <laughs> yeah, Go what look a at it. Go look at the picture. That mustache screams evil. That mu- you, wouldn't, you would not shave your facial hair into that unless you wanted to tell people that you are evil. Exactly. Maybe. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Maybe it wasn't BDQ. He doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be bothered at airports. Who wants to be bothered at an airport? Better yet, it's like trying to bother me during the middle of a crag, uh, crab leg buffet. No, don't, not going to happen. I will turn evil in a heartbeat. He'll turn, unlike John Cena. Can't do that. Team Extravaganza taking on the Devastation Corporation. Absolutely. Well, Devastation Corporation uh, has left a, a trail of carcasses in their wake. Um, Sidney Bacabella has proved to be a ruthless businessman and his team of Max Smash Master, Blaster McMassive, and uh, don't forget Flex Rumble Crunch. They're, they're, they're sort of like, uh, if you combine uh, Demolition, the Road Warriors, the Powers of Pain, and Chronic. God, that's another one I haven't thought of in a while, and that's Chronic. I haven't, boy, and they were a good team. Uh, also, don't forget about uh, an exciting team that I'm uh, that I'm really happy about, which is the Golden Trio, which is going to consist of all of Chikara's champs, like Icarus is our grand champion, and the Throwbacks, who are our tag team champs, nice. are, are come they for and they're going to comprise a, an entire trio of champs, and maybe add King of Trios to those to that championship list. Quite conceivable and quite easily possible, and they're going to be taking on LAX that night. Uh, why, and how about that? Oh, what, a, what a shocker. LAX coming into Chikara. Uh, that, that is definitely, this is a first for King, King of Trios first. So I'm, I'm excited to, to see what happens, see the fireworks here. It's going to be crazy. Mabo, come on oh, in. Hold on, Ed, before, before you continue, uh, I'd, li- I'd like to correct myself because uh, apparently my phone is cracked and it was messing up the pictures. Uh, it's actually the flood is, uh, the flood part of, this taking on Special Envoy would be Eddie Kingston, Jimmy Jacobs, and Volgar. Right. Yeah, I kind of messed that up. My phone, yeah, you, you've seen that cracked phone I use. So. <laughs> it's the, uh, the, uh, the BD Cube who's taking on 3-Pack-O, my team to win this year. Well, 3-Pack-O, uh, you know, uh, has proven to be a great team in the past, not just in the ring, but outside of the ring, uh, as they uh, rallied the Chikara fans during that dark period where Chikara wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't around. And, uh, you know, of course, in the end, procuring the DeLorean and saving National Pro Wrestling Day. And, and who knew Marchie Archie could get his hands on a DeLorean? Hmm. Well, you know, I'm sure it wasn't easy. I'm sure it took all three of them. <laughs> well, they don't, they don't call him Big Magic for, for no reason. They don't. That is true. Now, did we cover who three pe- uh, three Peco is taking on in uh, round- night number one for King of Trios? Yeah, that would that would be uh, Aries knocking and Doctor Cube. Okay, Doctor Cube, yeah. and then uh, yeah, so the Spectral Envoy is taking on the Flood combination of Jimmy Jacobs and Eddie Kingston, who recently uh, sort of created uh, created an alliance where there wasn't where there surely wasn't one before Jimmy Jacobs uh, playing mind games with Eddie Kingston and his um I guess the only way I can describe it is love affair with the Chikara Grand Championship. I mean he kind of refers to it 
as as a, he refers to it as she, as it's, as if it's a real woman, right. and uh, and almost like a, a scorned lover that that has left him. Well, I mean, you know, as those of uh, I can't remember which show it was recently, but you know, Jacobs made the promise to to King to help him get her back. And for those who have been keeping up with the point system, Jimmy Jacob Jimmy Jacobs is in line for a shot at Icarus's grand championship. So, yeah, do you think that. do you think Jacobs would lay the the belt at the feet of King, or do you think maybe he? And we have not spoken of him, and I'm honestly kind of afraid to mention his name because I don't want him to kick my bedroom door down. But uh, do you think maybe he would turn it over uh, to the Kalian? Hmm, that is an interesting. Uh... That's some interesting conspiracy theories there. You seem to know a little bit. You seem to know a lot. I don't know yeah, anything, you seem, sir. You seem to have a lot of information here. I'm kind of wondering how. Hmm. Well, I, I can I can guarantee I, you that that my flag stands firmly in the camp of Jakara and not the flood. Okay. All right. If you say so. How dare you, sir? <laughs> how dare you? Okay, I mean, I can't, I I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that thought never even crossed my mind. You know that. Well, that's, hey, just, that's just me. That's just me personally. Look, Gavin. I'll, I'll admit, Aries' mustache is very alluring. It, it rivals Dan Severn's mustache, but it is not. It is not enough to sway me to the side of the flood, firmly, Chikara. That would be fair. That would be definitely be fair. I would. I would personally be. I would like to see Dan Severn and. Aries perform uh, some some Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> Mabo, set up six. What I do? There goes production oh, chat. Oh, the, 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 the next match. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> I, I got mesmerized by the pictures. A picture of, of Aries' mustache. Sorry, it was it was it was wooing me over to the flood. Okay, um, do me a favor. Lean in. Lean in. Lean in. That'll get you back to reality. Uh, oh, the, the colony, the colony, uh, making up, uh, being comprised of Fire Ant, uh, the newly christened Silver Ant as of this season. He's no longer green. He is silver. And for those who do not think there is such thing as a Silver Ant, there is a Silver Ant that exists, I believe, in one of the desert climates. And uh, I think from what it ingests, it, uh, it helps protect it from the heat and gives it that silvery sheen. Uh, and no longer a Sail Ant. He is now a worker ant. He is. The newly, yeah, absolutely. The colony is back stronger than ever. Um, they are in first round action going up against their uh, sort of counter nemesis, the colony extreme force, which are really just a cheap knockoff of the colony. They, you know, they say someone who I'm not going to talk about thought it was a good idea to, to the, since the colony was successful, to just make another colony and give them lots of fluorescent colored costumes and big accessories and, you know, and give them guns and space helmets. And the colony extreme force, I didn't, you know, I think everybody sees them as the knockoff colony. So we're going to have the colony taking on the colony extreme force to see who is the real, the true colony, the true ants of Chikara. Well, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, that person who who I, some would say he sort of redeemed himself, but did did he not award the colony's original King of Trios medals to the Extreme Force? Uh, it, uh, he retro he, re he retroactively yes it, it crowned them uh, King Kings of Trios. Uh, which he had no right to do. And he also, I mean, not for nothing, he also tried to kill me. Well, I mean, that's not that's not good either. He, I'm just you know, he threw me in the ring with uh, a savage brute uh, with plans for me to see my demise. So, you know, I, I don't really think that uh, we need to talk about Wink Vavasor, that's for sure. He put you in the ring with my mom? <laughs> okay, I'm gone. <clears throat> and there is one more match that we know um, because we've you started to bring up the Golden Trio a minute ago, and I want to hit back on that one for a second. But I want to talk about a match that does have a lot of people talking on a different scale, and that is the Spirit Squad taking on Kizarni in the Auditorium. 
How about that? The Spirit Squad. Going to bring a little cheerocracy back to the King of Trios. Speaking of bring it on. And you got it. We talked about it a minute ago. And Mabo, go and just close your ears. Kizarni in his auditorium. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot to be said for the variety of personalities and athletes that are going to be participating in this year's King of Trios, Gavin. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think that variety is definitely the key to that satisfying meal that everyone wants when they go to see a wrestling show. Um, I just recently heard Kevin Sullivan uh, talking about wrestling on a, on a podcast. And he mentioned how um, wrestling should be like a circus. And I totally agree with that. That's exactly what I think. There should be this, you know, this, you have this, uh, the, high, the high tightrope walkers and then you have the clown and you have the acrobats and you have the strong man, you know, and then you finish you have the, the lion tamer, uh, the human cannonball at the end. And I really think that um, that's the, that is the spirit of King of Trios and I think everybody benefits from it. We get to see, uh, you know, the stars uh, that we all love and names that we all know really well. We get to see them mix it up with up-and-comers who get to learn from that. And um, and then, of course, we get to see the, the Chikara stars shine in the, under the, underneath the spotlight of their biggest show. And um, it's a really proud moment for me because, um, you know, I love wrestling so much, and I just really love the style of wrestling that Chikara brings uh, to our live events. I think it's, it's, I think it's pretty unique. I think it's like no, none other. Well, see, that's something that we have preached here on this show and up and down the network for quite a while. And when the return, if you want to use that term, or the rebirth of Chikara took place, there were so many people who were smiling and so many people who were applauding. And now the fact that we've got KOT back and it's right around the corner, it's coming up this weekend. Now, we've had a chance to talk about some of the matches or the matches that are going to take place on night one. Um, longtime Jakarmi faithful are going to remember, um, are going to, are really enjoying the factor of the Enclave taking place this weekend. Are there any additional surprises that you might want to throw out there, maybe for night two or night three, that haven't been actually brought up yet? Um. Well, I mean, uh, I definitely uh, want to, again, mention the, the Ray de Voladores tournament. Um, now, this happens, we do this, We did. We, it's a tradition that we've done at every King of Trios. It's sort of like the tournament within the tournament. And uh, it's uh, Ray de Voladores is translated to uh, the King of High Flyers. So it is an ex- it's an exciting mini tournament where uh, we... Uh, have had some great winners in the past, like um, some past winners include In- Incognito, who you now know as Sin Cara in the WWE. Right. Uh, another past winners have been, uh, uh, um, we're talking about um, uh, Kota Ibushi. We're talking about um, famous uh, Chikara guys such as uh, Helios, who now you know is Ricochet in Japan. Right. Um, so Rey de Voladores is, is a very, it's going to be super, it's, it's going to definitely be one of the most exciting parts of the non-tournament action. And uh, I, think, uh, I, think, I think we got Tigre Uno right. signed for, for that tournament. Oh, I think it's a, T, a, a star who's known in TNA. Yes. Um, actually, I have it in front of me. Um, the first elimination match... Uh, it appears to be Shinron, uh, Tigre Uno, Rich Swan, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Sweet Chucky T, Chuck Taylor. And I don't know, Ben, I mean, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Rich Swan oh, and yeah. the things that he can do inside that ring. Um, he, uh, Rich Swan has been, Rich, Rich Swan has been in, in, in the previous Radio de Voladores, but it was a while ago. It was before he'd gone on. And, uh, you know, all this seasoning that he's gotten all over the world. And now we're seeing a new Rich Swan. So this is going to be this is gonna be an incredible tournament. Of course, Chuck Taylor is a former Ray de Bolladores, um, which, he, which he, when he was the champ, he called it the King of Blippies. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, you've got the second, uh, the second elimination match uh, in the tournament. Right now, the Great Sonata is the only one named in that one that I can see. That's what I've got. Wait, which is, to me, that's an amazing poll. You know, star in Japan, star on TNA. 
and now he's going to be in the uh, Ray De Voladores, which, you know, once again, that's I think that's an amazing pull, and it's just him alone in that match is going to mean something. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's, it's just sort of like, you know, uh, it's, like a, it's like the play within the play, if, you, if you're familiar with Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Hamlet. Yeah. I love, the, I love Ray De Voladores. Um, and then, of course, you know, like I said, you know, when you go into night one, every night of King of Trios has something cool that's about it. Night one is cool because you get to see every single trio. Night two and three are awesome. Well, night, you know, night, night three is, of course, great because night three is, is the finals and you, you get to see who's crowned King of Trios. Night two is cool because that's where everything takes shape. Night two is when, you know, you, there's the, you know, like eliminations happen and then you start finding out some of these other bonus matches that you're going to get uh, because of all this talent that we've got on hand that maybe isn't going to be going further in the tournament so we, so that we can have some incredible tag, tag teams and singles matches uh, to, uh, to add on to the excitement. And then, of course, there's the, the fan conclave if you're there live to experience as well. Yes, and of course, what I always enjoy about night three is once you sort of, like you said, once every, everything has kind of been boiled down from nights one and two, uh, the tag gauntlet so uh, in night three, which to me is, is first of all, it's a great opportunity for any team to earn the three points needed uh, to get the uh, Campeonatos de Parejas. Uh, you know what? You know, God bless you for bringing that up. I almost forgot. That's another king of a big king of trios tradition, the the tag gauntlet, and in the past. We've had 10 teams, 13 teams. I think one year we had 16 teams in this tag gauntlet. So, so you know, you never know who's going to come out. You know, one year out of nowhere, Demolition came out. I, I, anything, I actually, yeah, anything can happen. I actually remember the one of the first King of Trios that I have, actually, uh, during the tag gauntlet. Uh, Someone who has, over the years, endeared himself into my heart, uh, he actually came back to Chikara, uh, was the gentleman Jervis Cottonbelly. Gentleman uh, Jervis Cottonbelly, yeah. He, well, he's going to be, his, his, he's of course going to be in his own trio during the tournament. Of course, um, uh, Team Extravaganza, if I'm not right. mistaken. Extravaganza, one of my, well, definitely one of my favorites, Marion Fontaine, and, uh, and fabulous, fabulous Thunder Kitty. You got, you got, oh, exactly. got a chance to check her out. She, uh, I, I haven't seen uh, a young female talent like this since, uh, since Donna Christianello. Well, let me ask you something about a night two matchup. Um, there's two non-tournament matchups other than the Ray De Voladores. Uh, one I'm interested in, one that I believe Bryce uh, coined with the term the Battle of the Bow Ties. Juan Francisco de Coronado taking on <laughs> TNA. I'm, I, it would be a disservice to say TNA superstar because I had been hearing the name Rockstar Spud yeah. for, 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 you know, a couple of years before. Um, international superstars. Camp. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say international superstar Rockstar Spud taking on Juan Francisco de Coronado, de Coronado in the Battle of the Bow Ties. And once again, another great pull for Chikara. What's your opinion well, on it? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, Juan, Juan Francisco de Coronado is the international superstar. I mean, he, let's not forget, this is a man who has sold out the Equidome True. on a number of occasions. I mean, uh, usually they had to fly him in by helicopter. I mean, we're also talking about a guy who went 4-0 and in Chikara, uh, finally getting a, a championship title match with, with uh, Icarus, and he went toe-to-toe with our champ and came within, you know, an eyelash of winning the big one. Um, keep your eyes. I mean, uh, keep your eyes out for Juan, de, de, Juan Francisco de Coronado. He's a lot more than just a bow tie, and uh, and Rockstar Spud. I'm excited. I haven't seen a lot of Rockstar Spud. I'm excited to see him in the, uh, get get it get it done in the ring here, and I'm 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 excited to be the rock and roll ring announcer, and uh, you know, hopefully, I'll give him a big rock and roll uh, ring entrance and get him excited to uh, to do battle. And, and lest we forget, if I'm not uh, as l- the last time I checked, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Juan still the pota- the po- possessor of the potassium. Yes, <laughs> the top banana. Oh yes, yes indeed. Uh, which I'm hoping hoping one day to see a title versus title 
Juan Francisco de Coronado, the possessor of the potassium, and the Cracker Jack champion, uh, the, the king of, of old-timey swing, Dasher Hatfield. Yes, the Cracker Jack champion. That's sort of our Western State Heritage title. Oh, see, I love you for even saying that. Nobody, nobody ever remembers the Western States unless they're old like Eddie. There you go. No, 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 no not, not, just, not just the Western States. The heritage of the Western states. Exactly. Because that, that is a lot of heritage out there. Have you seen the size of California? Have you seen Nevada? <laughs> that, that's a lot of heritage. Yeah, Utah, Wyoming, those things are enormous. You forgot know, Washington right? State and Oregon. <laughs> but uh, uh, the other non-tournament match, which, you know, a lot of people, even though he's still been around, you know, he still applied his trade uh, down at NXT before uh, being let go. A lot of people might not, you know, have forgot or might have forgotten about uh, Yoshi Tatsu, and he's coming in taking on uh, a newcomer in my eyes. I haven't seen much on him. Smooth sailing Ashley Remington, and yes. either way, Ashley the- Remington is, is he has had a very he has had a brief but impactful career in Chikara uh, uh, so far, and um, just uh, I mean he's just killing it. He is every every time he gets in the ring, we see something new out of actually Remington, and um, well, let's just say um, where Ashley goes, the ladies go. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Gavin. I have not been privy to see the DVDs yet or any of the things, but how lovely are the fruit baskets Ashley gives out to his opponents? I mean, I mean I've seen some pretty nice fruit baskets in my day, um, but the fruit baskets that Ashley Remington gives are... You know they're they're the size of Tyrion Lannister. They they've got they're filled with apple apples, bananas, mangoes, pomegranates. Uh, a box of Cracker Jacks is in there. You know, and then and then deep deep nestled inside is a is one of those chocolate golden coins that it has a handwritten note next to it. With all due respect, your friend Ashley Remington, keep on smooth sailing. He writes that by hand. Well, I heard that they actually rival some of these swag bags that are given out at such events as the Oscars, the Emmys, the Slammys. So, you know, if... If, if we're if, talking if, a hand... We, he doesn't give them... He doesn't drop by the, the, you know, your local department store and grab one off the rack. I mean, we're talking about somebody made this basket. Somebody hand-wove this basket and then filled it with, you know, fake grass and then, and then loaded it with, with fruit and goodies and... And, and let me tell you something. It's not just the fruit basket. It's the fact that it's given to you by Ashley. When, when, when he gives you something, he's just one of those people that makes you feel special. You love, to be around, you love to be around Ashley because Ashley loves to make you feel special. You know what? I have not exper- had much experience, but just hearing the way you and other people speak of, of Ashley Remington, it, it, it warms the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles right now. <laughs> Can that get any more awkward? I don't know. <laughs> we have warmed his cockles this evening. Do me a favor. How can people get it? Can you still get advanced tickets for KOT? Yeah, I do think that uh, there are some tickets available that are going very, very fast. I'm not sure that the conclave is, I, think, I don't think tickets, I think that the conclave possibly could be sold out. But, um, I mean, if you're down there, if you're down there in Easton, come down for check for King of Trios. Um, you know, we're going to try to, we're going to try to make sure everybody, uh, has a good time. Um, you know, cause we, we did when, when we ran our initial comeback show in May, uh, we did, we did, we sold out immediately and we ended up having to open up and get mo- a bigger room. So we do everything we can to accommodate, uh, to accommodate the, the, the big fans that come out for our big shows, especially for King of Trios. Um, so I would say get them now and, um, and please, please, let's 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 all have this trio celebration together because uh, it's been way, way, way too long, and I miss everybody. And, and I'm going to say right now, if you have not seen the promo video done in the Lego style, uh, <laughs> go watch it, uh, Gavin. I don't know if you know who put that one in the opening for podcast to go go where they look sort of like these Slam City guys. Uh, I don't know who whoever put that one, and then the and I love the song too. The big one is back for King of Trios. Mm-hmm. And, uh, have, you, have you seen the, the opening the, the opening for Podcast to Go Go? Yeah, that's the little Slam City looking guy. Yeah, with the I Slam City guys, right, right. 
dude, whoever did those uh, videos for you guys, tell them that their work is much appreciated. I watch those over and over again and laugh because I just think it's hilarious. And then one day I would love to see some Chikara Lego people. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the podcast opening is so cool. I, I think it really just shows you how awesome uh, uh, a Chikara video game or cartoon really would be. You know, it gives it gives you kind of a glimpse of like, wow, that would be really awesome. Uh, and then the 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 King of Trios Lego, uh, the Lego themed is my favorite because you know Legos were always my favorite thing growing up. Um, and there's all all my friends. I don't know anybody who doesn't love Legos. Legos are so cool. Uh, they're so iconic. Um, they bring you back to uh, adults and children. Both love Legos. The Lego Movie was was was, uh, was amazing. If you guys saw that, so. Um, so I think that the uh, this Lego King of Trios theme is probably one of my is probably my favorite. Mabo, oh, I'm not, look, I know because I know we, I know we we we've, we've held Gavin hostage, so to speak, long <laughs> enough, and I don't. I, I I could honestly sit there and cover everything that I have not been. I, I mean, I'm not saying look, I love Eddie, I love Wicked Nemesis, but they're not in in sconced in Shakar like I am. And to have somebody that I can verbalize with over, you know, the end of thir- season thirteen all the way up till now, and everything that happened, I, 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 we could talk for hours, but uh, we don't want to hold you up any any longer. You know. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm fine. We can. We can, you, If there's anything you would like to talk about, I'm here to do it. I, I owe you guys. Uh, you know, so I want to make sure I answer everything. Well, actually, I tell you what, um, I may go. I want to throw this one on the table because after we get past um, KOT. You've got some great live events coming up in late October and mid-November. Would you be willing to come back on with us to um to discuss those upcoming events? Sure, absolutely. Twist well, your arm. Because there's so, there's so <laughs> much I would love to talk talk about that we haven't got to cover, like the Ashes, you know, the the movie itself. Um, sadly, and I don't want to, you know, this this makes me cry for a different reason. But the the, the deaths of of Cobalt and and Thunder Frog. Yeah. And, and just the and and the Lithuanian proud of my God! Not, not the not the Lithuanian, not the Lithuanian proud oak, yeah. Oh, and then the the capture of Snow Troll. We have a, we have yeah we've got shikara has got a, a a real bad a real bad character now that's that's killing people. Yeah, that's, that's, that's I kind of mentioned him earlier. Like I said, I don't want to bring up bring him up because he will come through the door, and I do not want to get choke slammed across his knee. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're well, talking well, about a guy. We're talking about a guy who doesn't. Who you know? We, we haven't even seen wrestle a match. We've only seen him deliver a move. That once he delivers it, you're done. Yeah. If if you could ever think about you know, just think about that to process that. You know. Yeah. I mean, if you've got guys like, you know, Tursus and not well, Tursus when he was around and and knocking these these guys the, the Devastation Corporation these massive guys when they. They drop to one knee, not in so much respect, but in fear of the Kalian. Oh crap! Said his name. Um, <laughs> you know, I just if you ever wanted to see, if you ever wanted to get as close to a real life version of Bane from the Batman comic books, this would be it. But yeah, whatever, we, whatever he's got, whatever he's got, uh, he's got control over all the, over over a, a dangerous army. And then when you see that the leader of the army is the most dangerous one of all. Uh, you know, looks uh, that that just that definitely looks like trouble. Yes, but we will definitely continue that later on. We will hope be hopefully be discussing King of Trios and all that other stuff. Um, this is normally the part where I, I can't remember if Eddie has said anything, but uh, Gavin, how can our listeners uh, keep up with you and all your on ongoings and doings and shenanigans and such? I would love it if you uh, could keep in touch with me via my Twitter. At loud and noxious, uh, which is my uh, alter ego in Kaiju Big Battle and in pretty much every other walk of life. As I am also a professional karaoke host, and I also do lots of other fun things, like I'm in a band and I do comedy. So I love to keep up with um, everybody on Twitter. Please hit me up at loud and noxious. And for everyone's. Uh to get their fill of Chikara and Kaiju Big Battle, how can they keep up with it? You can definitely keep up with everything Kaiju Big Battle over on our Facebook page 
and uh, Facebook Kaiju Big Battle, and also we have a website, and the website is kaiju.com. Dude, and it's of all... course, all of your Chikara needs can be met on many various uh, sites across the uh, interwebs, such as ChikaraPro.com. Uh, I know that there's the Chikara 101 Pro Message Boards, and you got your Twitters and your Facebooks. And we have the Chikara, we also have a Chikara YouTube channel. Yes, that is right, the Chikara YouTube channel, which they can see your lovely face on. Where you can check me out every Monday night on the podcast at GoGo. There you go, Eddie. Dude, it's always a pleasure to have you on board. And like I said, I'm glad everything worked out to where we could get you back on this week. It's absolutely... Me too. To to use the words always appreciated or an understatement. Legitimate. <laughs> no. it's, a, it's, it's, all, it's a lot of fun to talk with you guys. Oh. Thanks for having me. And uh, let's do it again in a couple weeks. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest and great friend of the network, Loud and Noxious, Gavin Loudspeaker. The two, the one, the only, has just once again gone beyond ringside. Hang with us. We're going to a quick one, and we'll be back. Hey, Mabo, just for you, here's the Sinbodi sweeper. This is the Warlord of Weird Sinbodi, and when I'm not playing uh, Go Fish with a two-headed midget or riding around uh, clapping a whip at a donkey show, I will have you locked in beyond ringside. Sinbodi out. <laughs> Hey, this is Stan Grubb for WrestleRage Radio right here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us every Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for myself and Smart Rage as we discuss the professional wrestling business from WWE, TNA, and all things in between. We'll have an interview here or there. We'll see what we can do to just keep you entertained. And along the way, we're going to have to bring up some emotion and make you think. That's what we like to do. So join us here on Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see you at Wrestle Ridge. Hello, everybody. This is Dirty Dutch Mantel, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Hey, guys. This is Christy Ritchie, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all the upcoming show information. And, of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern for Beyond Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. You have tuned in and are now live listening to the three-time NWA heavyweight champion of the world, Scrapper and Anna Pierce. And just like you, I am also locked in. And brother, we are beyond ringside. And the party continues. Let's do it. The home run round on this Sunday thing. Uh, Welcome back in. Beyond Ringside Live on this 14th day of September. Special thank you, Gavin Loudspeaker from Chikara. Always great to have him on board. Also, Loud and Noxious from Kaishu Big Battle. Try to say that three times fast. Without me getting sued for some kind of really bad accent that I shouldn't really do while sober. So, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Mabel, welcome really. back, dude. Oh, Mabel. What? There you are. Yeah, we lost Wick somewhere along the way. Of course, I'm going to go and let everybody know that. Uh, well, I'll do all that in the um, shameless plug section of the program. Um, now, have you had a chance to catch the ROH broadcast from last night with matches from um, Final D? Uh, I, I, from what? What did you say? I was trying to say Final Destination, and it, that was the wrong promotion, but that's the words that popped in my head. Yeah, I was. you said Final D, and I was like, Final what? <laughs> I was, you kind of threw me off there, little buddy. I was just—I don't even know what that means. No, but, because um, my for, brain blanked out because I was trying to remember the name of the show that this particular match, these matches came from, and for some reason, my brain started going Final Destination, and it's like Eddie, I know that's not right. <laughs> let's put it this way: I'm sure there's the word honor in, in this card at somewhere, so. Because it usually is. Uh, but no, it was, I did, de- um, it know, was death those, before dishonor is where it was from, and I apologize for screwing it up. 
Well, it, it, anybody knows who lives in the South, you know how big college football is, and uh, it decided to bleed over a little bit into something that's way more important to me than college football, that's pro wrestling. Uh, so I did catch, uh, I guess it decided to pick up halfway through, you know, you know, we now, we now continue with the scheduled programming. Yeah. Um, so I came in during the uh, O'Reilly AJ Styles match. Dude, go ahead. Oh, I was. I mean, like from what I saw, you know, I'm not a big Kyle O'Reilly fan. Um, I just, I don't know. I just Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, just that, you know, it just doesn't, you know, uncork my champagne bottle. So, but I will say this: that sick ass running. I, I, not even a missile. I wouldn't even call that a missile drop kick. I would call that some kind of street fighter, Mortal Kombat, Hadouken kick to the chest that he did to Styles in the corner, and not just the ring corner, the corner of the guardrail, right from the ring apron. That even that, I I was just like, you know what? I don't like you that much, kid. You know, you know, you're not my, my favorite flavor of ice cream, but that was impressive. And uh, I was. I was impressed. Um, I saw that. Uh, you know, I saw everything, you know, up to that point. I don't know. I doubt there was a match before the AJ uh, O'Reilly match. No, we'll find out later because, remember, ROH and our market re-airs. Yeah. Yeah, we're lucky enough that, you know, if, you know, something as stupid as college football gets in the way, we can catch it later. There um, you go. Huh? There you go. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, um, to love – Love the uh, the Briscoe Young Bucks match. Uh, I would like I, I I would like to I could I could sit there and watch those guys go all day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I was impressed with it. The uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Scrap Daddy being brought out by the decade. Yep. Uh, taking on Tadarius Thomas. Uh, you know it, it was what it was. I mean. You know, for, for what once again, it's kind of like the O'Reilly thing. Uh, I, I like Scrap. I like what he stands for. You know, I like I like him. Uh, for there is Thomas. You know, once again, he's one of those that he's not a go-to guy for me. Just like right. Scrap, I respect Scrap. I like what Scrap does. Scrap's been on the show uh, numerous times. But you know, they're not my go-to guys. But if they're on and I happen to catch them and what they're doing. Uh, I, I like what they do. I like what they do. Uh, I wish the decade, you know, would get a little bit more airtime. And I know it's hard to do with just an hour show, but to me, this could be something. It could be. It could be built up a little bit better and so, so much more. But you know, unfortunately, when you only have an hour to work with, you got to buy the DVD. And you know, and you, speaking of. Briscoe, that last name, you know that there was a title change. What? Jay Briscoe became the second two time ROH champion. Spoiler in, alert, Eddie, some of us haven't heard about that. No, it was we're that. Seeing, it's we're been, still seeing uh, Michael Elgin. Okay, I apologize for that, but, I, but it's been all over the place and it's one of the results from. Um, Bro, oh, I have not seen any okay. of that. I actually have, there have been some of the video clips that have been made public on, people have snuck it out on underground sites, I'll put it that way. Oh, okay, because I mean, I'm still seeing Elgin, you know, as the champion, because I think next week he's supposed to be taking on a uh, yeah. uh, mustache guy. Yeah, but we do have, and I'm, I'm going to go and break it, because technically it's not a spoiler because it did happen at a live event. Um, it's kind of like happening at a house show, but it, it meant more. <laughs> Sorry. But Ring of Honor's sixth all-star extravaganza provided fans with a shock that no one saw coming. The Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto housed the iPay-Per-View event from a previous weekend. And you know something? We have a new ROH World Heavyweight Champion. Jay Briscoe defeated Michael Elgin via pinfall after hitting a J-Driller. He joins Austin Aries as the second two-time ROH world champion in the company's history. And anybody, any of you guys who've ever seen Michael Elgin know he's a big boy, and it takes a lot to get him up in a J-driller, so. Yeah, buddy. 
But like I said, I didn't mean to break that. Um, to break that one is anything more than just breaking news over the last week. And it's just absolutely it. There's been speculation as to why the title change occurred, and I'm just going to let that speculation stay where it is right now. Um, well, you need to speculate with me off the air because we'll, we'll do that. Mind, uh, I haven't really uh, seen anything lately, nor yeah, especially over the weekend. Right. If there's anything said, uh, you know, hanging out with my you know three three of my favorite homies over the weekend, so. And we're going to get you the cooler scooter one of these days. And it's going to be me, you, and Tunzi in a three-way race on the on the cruising scooter. Are you talking about what, what James Storm used to drive? That's the Boozer Cruiser, yeah. <laughs> All right, but mine will probably be full of uh, Milo Sweet Tea or something. Oh, my. By the way, kids, stay away from cheer wine. It is a soda. It is disgusting. It will make you literally burp up every foul thing you have that's been sitting in the pit of your stomach for years, and it will make your roommate almost crash the car on the way back from the comic book store. <laughs> Let's do this thing. Maybo, last call. Uh, I think Chuck, we don't have to say anything because we covered everything I wanted to say with Loudon, or Gavin, or Gav Loudon, <laughs> or like Glavin. I don't even know what to call the guy. He's my hero. That's what he is. And we were treated to a live performance. Yeah. Who who gets a live performance? You know who? Nobody. You have to go to a Chikara event. We got it live on Beyond Ringside. What the crap? Yeah. I feel blessed. I got two words for you. First word, pop. Second word, damn. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, I loved but, it. I mean, yeah, and then, you know, earlier we covered uh, uh, NXT TakeOver. Uh, we covered that. You know, because those are my big two, the two big things these days. I mean... TNA, uh, God bless them. You know, that's all I can say. Or somebody needs to because something's wrong. Uh, I think it's, I, I don't want to say it's too little too late. Uh, oh, and, and not trying to say, so nobody read into this too much, but King of Trios happens the 19th, 20th, and the 21st, correct, Eddie? Correct. And in Eastern Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken, at the Funplex. It goes by its real name, but I think they refer to it as the Funplex. Not too far down the road. Excuse me. There's that sneeze that turned into a burp. Uh, Not too far down the road. I think from what the locals tell me, eight to ten miles down the road from King of Trios this weekend, TNA is having an event at a casino. I think it might be their TV tapings. So that's why we're seeing Rockstar Spud. That's why we're seeing Sonata. Sonata. And I've heard rumors. These are all rumors. Please don't read into them, people. You know, don't address any letters. These are all rumors. I'm even saying they're rumors. But, and this is not coming from, trust me, this is not coming from from uh, the Chikara front office. I have not been in contact with Director of Fun, Mike Quackenbush, nor the new owner, Robbie Ellis. This is just my own speculation. I've heard rumor that there might be even more TNA talent showing up. I mean, oh, and Tigre Uno. I forgot about Tigre Uno. No, I, I tried to mention, but you were you were in sentence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sonata, Tigre Uno, Rockstar Spud. Who knows? Who knows? I'm not saying it, would, it would, wouldn't be awesome. I bet you a cheeseburger, Austin Aries, would be one of the ones to show up. No, 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 no. I don't know if he would show up. But to see this match, I would I would pay for this. Eddie Kingston. We all know how hard hard hitting the War King is, Eddie Kingston. Of course. But to bring in someone who I would say is tougher than Eddie Kingston, and there's not too many men in the world that's tougher than Eddie Kingston. You have my attention. Samoa Joe. That'd be hell. That'd be hellacious. It would l- literally be. I, I guarantee you it. Each shot from them would rattle the fillings in your teeth. Now it'd rattle the foundation of the freaking building. The east. It's by the way. Quick reminder, folks: the Palmer Center, forty-one hundred Green Pond Road in Easton, Pennsylvania. Remember, uh, night one, I believe, starts at seven. Doors open at six. Night two um, starts at seven. Doors open at six. And the fan enclave. Don't forget on um, enclave. Conclave. 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 I know. I said it right one time, said it wrong one time. So I had to break the tie. Got it right the last time. Check it out. Yes. 
and 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 like I said, it's uh, as uh, and I mentioned it previously, and this is this is not really a shameless plug. It's just uh, something I've kind of picked up on. Uh, Chikara's intrepid reporter Babs uh, has her own Chikara centric podcast. It's called uh, Chikara in Fifteen Minutes, um, and she really does. Like, unless it's something like a big deal, which I'm sure post King of Trios will be a big deal. Uh, she really does. She keeps it in under fifteen minutes, and she you know gives you the news, and uh, you know gives you you know plugs for you know where other if Chikara members have been uh, you know members of the rosters have been on previous podcasts. Hint, hit Eddie sitting in an email. Mm-hmm. Uh, she'll promote that, and you know other stuff. But she's uh, yeah, she so vehemently says uh, in her latest podcast, you cannot catch the it, this on i pay per view. So. For those of you who think, oh, well, you know, this is Chikara's, you know, big one, they're going to put it on iPay-Per-View. Chikara's not putting King of Trios on iPay-Per-View. Nope. So if you want to catch it live, you got to get your butt down to Easton, or actually up over side, wherever, wherever you're coming from. you got to get to Easton. Yep. Shameless plugs, real quick. I'm not, okay, fine. Shameless plugs. Oh, crap. I don't know. Uh... Yeah, yeah, okay. Want to remind everybody, Wrestle Rage with Smart Rage and Stan kicks off in about 18 minutes from right now. They're going to be welcoming a special guest, Matt Sexells, a little bit later this evening at 11 p.m. Eastern. The Midnight Black Mass with the good Reverend Dan Wilson as he welcomes back Scott Hudson for part two of that great interview. Dude, part one was fun, and the Reds rant you can, uh, irreplaceable. You just gotta you gotta love it because nine times out of ten. You would have sit back and said, no, that's 10 times out of 10 because he hasn't missed yet. Tuesday night, Back to Basics return, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. The To Be Determined show Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. And Cause and Effect present the Thursday night radio throwdown. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. And, of course, the Beyond Ringside Saturday Showcase, Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. Keep your eyes open on BeyondRingside.com, especially at Beyond Ringside on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live. You can catch the Beyondcast podcast through Podomatic, through iTunes, through Spreaker, and through Stitcher. And more ways than that. Check out the media page at BeyondRingside.com. Um... For me personally, at Fast Study Lane over on Twitter and FastStudyLane.com, at Wicked Nemesis, one word, run it together, um, over on Twitter. And you can catch Wicked Nemesis through his Facebook fan page as well, the Wicked Nemesis Enoch Tessarian. Uh, Mabo, do you want to throw your uh, Twitter out there, or is that? No, I'm good. Okie dokie. Got to take it home for now. Until next time, for the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. The God's Portugal Local Independent Wrestling. Thank you all for listening. Tune into the Two Be Able Tell Me Show this Wednesday night. Have a good night. For Mark Mabo Bowman. Everything is awesome. I had this feeling you're about to break into a long form David Bowie. Until next time. Thanks Ooh. again. What's his name? The guy who calls in every once in a while, the pop singer from the eighties. I figured Ooh. you were gonna try to copy David Bowie who often calls into the show. Oh no, not that guy? Never heard of him. Oh, okay. Who do you ever be, kid? Hmm, Bing Crosby at White Christmas. Thank you again, Gavin Loudspeaker. Always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on, and thank you for being so generous with the time. Folks, Fast Eddie Lane saying, until next time, join us right here as we all go beyond ringside. Bye for now. <laughs>